So this is pretty cool. Uh, Sport-related concussions actually present a really unique problem in the head injury space because uh, not only are you dealing with a concussion, but you're dealing with a concussion under the condition of elevated core body temperature. So the brain is actually warmer when you're playing sports and that actually can make a difference in your concussion recovery. We know that increased brain and core temperatures in models of traumatic brain injury, um, so things like stroke and hemorrhage and animal traumatic brain injury, uh, we got worse outcomes when the brain is warm. And so this study, these researchers took elite Swedish ice hockey players, so professional Swedish ice hockey players, and found that if we cooled their necks early, we actually improved their recovery times, which is pretty cool, no pun intended. The background for this is that hot brains have to work harder. So for every increase in uh, body temperature, so every degree increase in temperature, your brain's demand for oxygen and glucose goes up six to 10%. And we also know that there's a metabolic energy demand in concussion itself. So the stretching and shearing of concussion causes, we think around a 20% energy deficit because your mitochondria are flooded with calcium and they can't produce oxygen as well or use that oxidative pathway as well to produce ATP. Um, and so you've got this metabolic injury that requires a bunch of energy and you've got this uh, elevated core temperature, this elevated brain temperature, which requires six to 10% more energy, making a sports concussion quite the conundrum because we know that especially hockey players and different athletes who are like aerobically really working can get really warm. So what these researchers asked is, what if we could selectively cool the head and the neck quickly after a concussion to try to reduce the brain temperature? So they got sweet, elite Swedish ice hockey players to get into the action and they did a pilot study with 15 teams and recorded 81 concussions from 2016 to 2019. And then they did another clinical trial more recently where they had 19 teams uh, with 132 concussions from 2016 to 2021. And they used this uh, tool called the Polar Cap, which uh, essentially it's like the silicone cap with coolant that runs through it at about zero degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit. And on average, these athletes put the cap on within 10 minutes of the injury and they wore it for about 45 minutes. And what we found was uh, that the head cooling group returned to play in about seven to nine days, which I have a problem with that. I think that's too fast, but comparatively speaking for the group and for the study and what they found, the head cooling group returned in about eight days with only 25% of the folks having delayed recovery. Whereas the control group with no head cooling, they returned to play in about 12 to 13 days with around 44% of the people uh, having a delayed recovery. Um, generally speaking, I like to see contact athletes not returning to play until 21 days. So both groups were a little bit too fast, but as they were measuring, it probably means that in seven to nine days, these folks' symptoms went away compared to 12 to 13 days, these folks' symptoms went away. Um, so the head cooling group led to a little bit of faster recovery. So what can we do with this information? Uh, this is all well and good, but if you don't have access to a polar cap on the side of your bench, um, and you can't get it on within 10 minutes, what can you do? You can simply remove yourself from the game. Get off the field, the court, the rink. Remove yourself, remove the athlete you're working with, get them some water, um, start removing gear, get off the shoulder pads, get off the helmets and start cooling down. Uh, we know from other research that continuing to play can keep your core temperature elevated and we know that athletes uh, who continue to play are about nine times more likely to have a delayed recovery. When I say delayed, I mean longer than 21 days. Um, so ultimately what we can learn from this Swedish ice hockey study is there's some really cool technology coming out. Um, I'd actually be really curious uh, if anyone listens to the Huberman Lab podcast for a while ago, he was talking about uh, actually cooling the palms of the hands or the soles of the feet where there's these uh, arterial venous anastomoses where it basically goes arterial uh, arteries to veins uh, without a capillary bed and that's actually a faster way to cool the body. So I'd actually be really curious if uh, the selective head and neck cooling would actually work better by cooling the, the core temperature through the palms, but I digress. What we can do without all that fancy tools is simply remove yourself from play and when in doubt, sit out. Just start cooling down. If you took a funny hit and you start to feel uh, headaches or pressure or dizzy or disoriented or foggy, just remove yourself from play. We know that you have a nine times greater chance of having a delayed recovery if you don't. Um, and at worst, you miss a couple periods, you miss the game and that's okay. Uh, so if you learned something new or you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a like, give me a follow and I'll see you next time.